what's up? It's I'm Stricken06 of I'mStricken06.com and welcome back to my garage and today we're going to be doing a review and a toolbox tour of my brand new Harbor Freight 5 drawer tool cart. Now as you can tell it doesn't look like your typical Harbor Freight toolbox. I went ahead and debatched the US General logo and added some carbon fiber vinyl in its place. I went ahead and drilled some holes up top here. I installed some Harbor Freight magnetic uh, uh, I don't know what to call this, but basically it's a giant magnet stuck inside a metal brace and your tools will stick to it. They're pretty handy. Uh, some of the bigger wrenches didn't really want to stick even to both of them, so I have a small magnet uh, behind the actual wrench. These are two for 99 cents at Harbor Freight as well. I picked up a bunch of these little magnets. These magnets are also holding up my Allen keys, the picks, and um, a couple of things on the back I'll show you as well they're holding. There's a lot of real estate on the back of the cart that's pretty flat, so you can stick on a bunch of stuff as well. Uh, I've got the accessory tool tray here on the side. Right now it's got a, my bounty roll uh, kind of in that cubby. But this is cool for a laptop, you know, if you need to look up any kind of part numbers or any kind of schematics and stuff. Uh, you can use it as just an extra tool tray like I'm doing right now with my impacts and ratchets. Um, it's got a lot of neat little cubbies that they thought of. You know, you got screwdriver slots in here. And um, the handle, like I said, I'm not gonna be using this to cart around. So right now the handle is actually holding the hammers. Starting off here on a tray, I got my newest Milwaukee. It's my uh, ratchet, really cool little tool. I'll do a review on it a little bit later. I have uh, a little Fl Harbor Freight flashlight. I have the uh, right angle impact from Milwaukee as well. I got my drill, and I got the uh, Beast uh, impact here from Milwaukee as well. So right here on the lid, as I explained earlier, I got my magnets. They're holding up all my uh, wrenches, and they're also holding up some, uh, I got a light here that shines here whenever it's dark. I got uh, picks and Allen, a set of Allen keys with the uh, matching Allen keys down there. Uh, I got some little tongs, and that's pretty much it for right now. And moving down here on a top tray, I got screwdrivers here. These are all my flathead screwdrivers, as well as, because the holes here are so large, I have a ratcheting 3 8 breaker bar, a 3 8 non-ratcheting breaker bar, as well as the newest breaker bar. It's a uh, half inch, pretty large one. And those reside right there and on the left side I have some hammers here some uh, mallets uh, non marring ones I have a dead blow I got a regular claw hammer uh, three pound sledge and I think this is five pound sledge I'm not sure right here I also got the Phillips heads and I also have brass brushes and nylon brushes right there in the corner whenever I need to clean something off on the left here the sockets are all SAE sockets these are deep wells um, as well as normal sockets. These are all half inch, moving right into deep 3 8 SAE sockets, moving right into uh, 3 8 small sockets. Those are impact, these are non impact. I got SAE wobbles impacts, I got uh, SAE non impact. These are all six points, by the way. These start a very small set of uh, 12 point. I also have SAE. Um, quarter inch right here and everything facing this way towards you is going to be the metrics I've got very large 36 inch socket it's a non-impact back there um, I have a 27 32 they don't even fit on these trays I have a 30 these are all of my deep metric sockets these are all my shallow metric sockets these are all half inch then we move on to the 3 8 so here I got wobbles I have deep non-impact, I've got impact uh, normal ones, I've got uh, normal non-impact, also all six pointers, got a couple 12 points, I don't really use 12 points that much, I don't really trust them to be honest with you, they've rounded off too many nuts. And I have a uh, quarter inch here uh, metric ones as well, got a little tray of various, um, like this is for example thread lock, this is the red, red one, yeah that's the red one. I have a blue one, I also have anti-seize in there from Permatex, um, and I have back here hiding the 
uh, Allen head sockets, as well as impact uh, sockets ranging from T30 to T70, uh, the star shape. Uh, I only use those ones to remove the seats in the Nissan. Moving away from the sockets, let's go ahead and move on to where the ratchets are stored. And this is my ratchet and extension drawer. Here I have a half inch ratchet. I have a 3 8 uh, flex head ratchet with the comfort grip handle. I have my Husky trusted 3 8 ratchet. I've had this for like 10 years, I love this thing. I got all different extensions here. This is a half inch extension. These are all 3 8 extensions. Some are impacting, some are not. I have um, various uh, socket adapters. This will like do a uh, quarter inch to 3 8 these are uh, wobble heads. These are universal joints over here. I got a half inch universal joint. I got some of my least popular ratchets back here. They're kind of like a just in case ratchet. And back there I have uh, all the quarter inch stuff. A quarter inch T-handle. I have this, it's like a screwdriver, but it's also can be used as an extension. It's got a nice comfortable grip on it. I have here the uh, quarter inch ratchet, which I, very rarely used so it's kind of sitting back there just you know waiting to be used basically and that's pretty much it on the ratchet and extension drawer let's move over to the right side on the top right we have my drilling and measuring drawer it's everything that I would use basically to drill and measure with so let's start off here I got my easy outs this is a great little pocket tool here uh, basically when you strip a screw head you're gonna drill yourself a, a nice hole and then this is going to be a reverse threaded drill bit basically and it actually does extract the screw out great little tool to have i got a uh, automatic center punch back here basically you push this down and it's gonna uh, punch a nice little hole here so the drill bit doesn't start walking when you're drilling into metal here is a great kit that thankfully i've never had to use yet by Irwin. These are uh, basically nut and bolt extractors. They are reverse threaded. Uh, so when you go ahead and have a stripped nut or bolt, you can see the way they look inside. They're gonna actually grip onto that nut or bolt and remove it after it's already been stripped. And you can use it with a 3 8 socket or you can actually use this uh, six point socket on top of this. So it's a great little kit to have. Um, I didn't mention, but I also have back here lug, lug nut extractors. These are also reverse threaded, but um, what they do is they actually grip onto a lug nut after you've lost the key. So these remove uh, lock nuts basically off of a car. And I got two sizes of that. That's actually one of my most popular videos. We're encroaching on 200,000 views on it. Here I have my Milwaukee kit. Um, this is, like I said, everything I would need to use with uh, an electric screwdriver or a drill driver. Um, I've got various um, adapters here from quarter inch to three eighths to half inch. This would go onto one of my impacts. This is a half inch uh, DeWalt. This is a three eighths Milwaukee adapter. This basically turns your uh, impact driver into a quarter inch adapter to fit these various screwdriver tips. Uh, these have all different various screwdriver tips. It has a couple different uh, nut driver sizes here. Uh, this quarter inch I use to drive self-tapping screws into sheet metal. Uh, very good grounding point for your car. Here, uh, various screwdriver tips as well. These are all impact rated, by the way. These are all impact rated as well. So it's a really cool kit to have. It was on sale over Black Friday, so I picked it up. I have a couple of cheesy Harbor Freight screwdriver tips that, believe it or not, have not rounded off yet. They lost some of the coloring on top, but they've lasted, so I can't complain. Two free measuring tapes I got from Harbor Freight. Back here, some Harbor Freight uh, high-speed drill bit set, titanium nitrate coated, supposedly. Here I have my Milwaukee uh, drill bits. I already lost one unfortunately, but these are some really high speed drill bits. These are some really nice drill bits, man. They're sharp. And back here I got various stuff uh, in this little box here. 
uh, random drill bits that I bought for certain jobs that I needed to get done. This I used to scratch off paint in certain areas to have a good grounding point inside of a car. Um, step drill bits, these are really awesome. They basically are a whole bunch of drill bits in one. You can see the measurements there on the side. They cut clean holes really, really quickly. These are great. Uh, I use this one more than the big one. Uh, just various little odds and ends for drilling. Like I said, most of the time you, you have a certain job and you don't have a specific drill bit for it, so you run out and buy one. Well, you can't just stick it into any kit because there's no room for it. So I got that there. So the next drawer down is gonna be one of the wider ones. This is my pliers drawer. It's got a bunch of different things in here. I got a nice little rack that uh, organizes everything. This was actually one big rack. It was a lot longer. I took a, a cutter to it and cut it so I can arrange the bigger pieces because it has some very wide slots and some very thin slots. So I cut off uh, a big portion of the wide ones and stuck it here on the side so I can fit some of the vice grips. I got the little ones in here. I got the bigger uh, alligator nose, um, some weird sheet metal ones that are typically used for welding, but I use them to bend uh, nice bends in sheet metal. So let's start here from the top. I got some various pliers, uh, adjustable ones like that, pipe wrench ones. I got this one here. I, I never use these. I absolutely hate them. They round off too many nuts because whenever you try to get it the right size, they all wiggle. And that wiggles enough to round off a nut, and then you are up. You know what creek without a paddle. Here I have uh, cutting ones. You, people typically use this to nip at tile. What I do is I actually crimp CV boots with these, or I'll just cut weird things that I need cut. Doesn't fit that way, so I have to store them this way. Here I got needle nose pliers with a wire cutter inside of here. I don't typically use these because I have a uh, electric drawer that we'll get to in a minute. I got some blunt nose ones with some grippers on top. These will come in handy. Uh, I got scissors because obviously this is the cutting section. I have the little cheap ones that I got from Harbor Freight. They're really small. They can get into tiny places, so they kind of have their role. Here I have interior bodywork tools. This will uh, remove body panels and plastic pieces inside of a car. Uh, this will remove those annoying plastic clips. Um, this will remove also those annoying plastic clips, but this one's spring-loaded. It will actually pull up on those. Um, pieces so absolutely love these tools right here use them a lot here we have uh, safety wire pliers if you've worked in aircraft field or if you've raced you know exactly what these are you use this in conjunction with safety wire you have to drill a hole through the bolt head or a nut or any kind of fastener and then wire safety wire to a stationary anchor point in a specific way these will once you grip the wire and uh, it's, it's hanging on, you lock it down, it's now gripping that wire. Well, if you wind this up and let it go, it will spin and that will twist the wire in a perfect format because of this here tool and you can make a, appropriate loops in specific formats and you can uh, make sure a nut will never release itself. Here I got sheet metal shears. I have um, a safety clip or a retainer, this does reverse. For example, um, if I do that, it will now be fully open, so I can uh, pull spring clips or ring clips closed, or the opposite, I can extract them open and release them. So this is a really cool tool here. I used this on my CV axle when I had to rebuild it. These are the little adapters for it, little different metal uh, angles. Um, like I said, these are my, um, oh man, vice grips. I have little ones here for little work. I've got weird ones for, uh, these are cool because you can actually grip metal, sheet metal with them, and um, you can hold on to sheet metal. It's nice. You can also, I've seen Eric the car guy do it. Great idea. He stuck like hose, for example, like fuel line hose or something, a transmission line hose, on each one of these uh, here uh, teeth, and he'll open it up just enough so he can grip and cut off fuel lines or cut off uh, brake fluid lines. I don't agree with brake fluid lines because they can crack and break and permanently deform, but you can pinch close certain lines, which is a really cool idea. Uh, like I said, these here uh, I use to repair uh, vehicles that have sheet metal issues or I can fabricate sheet metal because this has a really wide, almost like a snowplow tip that I can use to make a nice clean bend on. The next drawer is gonna be like bulk item drawers. It is 
everything. Here's that safety wire I was telling you about for safety wiring nuts and bolts. But here we have pry bars. We've got a file here, a really, really thin file that I use for certain things. Um, this is like your basic small flat pry bar. Um, this is, I believe they call this like a lady foot or something, or I don't know, some kind of woman's foot uh, pry bar. Nice flat tip here. You can actually pound the back of this if you need to scrape something. Uh, I've used this before on a couple of projects. Here's my small pickle fork. You can use this on pitman arms, you can use this on bowl joints, you can use this all over the place. You can also hit the back of it, you can see I've done it. Really cool little tool. Uh, I have a really big pry bar back here. It spans the whole drawer. It's like the most perfect size I could have found. Here, safety wire, uh, electric um, torque wrench. I have here, this is a impact screwdriver with various tips. Uh, typically used to get those Honda style uh, rotor screws off. Here I have my first um, torque wrench. This is a manual style. It's a half inch. I don't use this anymore. I have a half inch torque wrench. This goes up to 150 foot pounds of torque. And I have my 3 8 Craftsman torque wrench. Absolutely love this thing. It goes up to 75 foot pounds of torque. That's pretty much it. Got some room to grow in this drawer. I'm not looking to clog it up just yet. And last but not least, this drawer I left to be last because technically not all my electrical tools are in here. Behind me is like a shelf with a red toolbox I'll show you in a minute where I got a bunch of bulk wire and shrink wrap things like that. Stuff I don't want cluttering these drawers up. Uh, this is mostly for hand tools only. Supplies and things like that I have stored away. I'll show in a minute. But starting from the back here I have a really high powered uh, soldering iron. Love this thing. Uh, got my Mac tools crimper. This is one that I found actually in a customer's car. So I kept it. Um, I have a crimper here. It does three solid crimps. You can see the colors for terminals. Here I have a different style of crimper. This does uh, really small style of crimp. It's different. It uh, could be used in Deutsch connectors, things like that. Kind of a rarely used tool, but when you need it, boy, do you need it. Um, here I have like lineman pliers. They have a really strong, nice big handle, so they can cut a thick wire right here in the teeth. And you can also do a crimp here as well, but I don't typically trust this style of crimp. I'd rather go to a, a true crimper tool. The two wire cutters. Um, and these are wire strippers. Absolutely awesome tools. They also have crimpers here, which I don't use. They also have a wire cutter, which I don't use. I use specific tools for specific jobs. I only use this to strip a wire. It's super easy. Let me show you. So here I have a typical black wire. You're gonna stick it inside of here and let it do its magic. Nice, clean wire. No frayed wires, no wires missing. Nothing was pulled off here, like when you're yanking at a wire with uh, wire cutters. This is an awesome tool. So, yeah, I use that frequently. I, I do a lot of emergency light installations, as you guys can tell on my channel. So, if not, search my channel, you'll see them. I work with a great company called US Signal and Safety. They send me products, I install and review, and I get feedback on it. So, I've probably installed 20, 30, 40 lights just this year so um, yeah so I, I use this drawer excessively I'm always doing some kind of electrical testing on some um, uh, emergency lights I might not install it I just might test it you know, sometimes I'll leave it on in my garage overnight and just to see if it burns out or not just to see what happens to it how much battery is it gonna use running in a 24-hour cycle so yeah if you guys need emergency lights search my channel for US signal and safety lights Top-notch stuff, really good stuff. That's my uh, electrical drawer. Down below is gonna be my cutoff bag. And by cutoff bag, what I mean is I have this style of cutoff tool. I have an angle grinder. I have uh, a orbital hand sander, and I have my Dremel. This is kind of like my cut tools, things that I used to grind and cut things away with. On the side of the cart, via magnets, I have uh, oil wrench. 
oil filter wrench. Behind it is a caliper spreader tool. I have oil filter caps here uh, stuck to the magnets in the magnetic tool tray. Pretty simple. I have a, a drawer here for uh, various sprays. But I don't typically use them because I have this whole drawer here or the shelf with uh, all the other various things here such as lubricants, brake cleaners, uh, spray paints. I have um, waxes and polishes and things like that here. Um, Windex, you know, all these various different fluids. I don't really use this tray so much, but whatever, it's there. Here's that electrical toolbox that I've been telling you about where I store a lot of the bulk items, starting from the top, liquid tape. This is from the same makers as Plasti Dip. I have dielectric grease that is good for plugs that are exposed to the elements. And I have solder. I use 6040 rosin core solder, electrical tape, uh, positive and minus tester wires. I got a bunch of various sockets here, uh, male and female for cigarette lighter stuff. Um, just various little odds and ends here. Set that aside. I have a junkie multimeter. I have, what is that back there? Oh, some wire. Various wire loom, all different sizes and things like that. I have various shrink tube stuff. Don't ever do a job without shrink tube. I'm always shrinking something up to make sure that it's nice and secure. I have different various shrink tube sizes, all different rolls of it, different colors of it. A bunch more electrical tape, I never have enough. Um, various little odds and ends. I got more tester wires, test leads, whatever. Various alligator clips that I can make projects with and things like that. I got some recycled, um, this isn't shrink tubing, this is just protective tubing. Um, got some weird wires here that I just cut in case I need to make some test leads or something like that on my own. As well as I got a box here with um, just scrap wire. You know, sometimes you'll cut off, I don't know, 10 feet of it and you only use five. So you got five feet of just scrap wire here that doesn't go back on the roll. Here I have rolls of wire. Some of this stuff is really new, never really used. Different gauges of wire ranging from 18 to like, you know, six gauge, stuff like that. I got some pretty high quality wire in here. We all know wire is expensive, so you don't want to waste any of it. This is my glue and RTV uh, little toolbox. I got all different various uh, glues, epoxies, RTVs, uh, you name it. Anything that needs to be secured via glue or protected via uh, an epoxy of some form, it's going to be in this uh, toolbox. Also have some like uh, Velcro, things like that, and foam pieces, double-sided sticky tape, uh, some FSMs. Uh, for different cars, a bunch of different bottles of oil. Let me see. Ratchet straps. I also have two sets of vehicle ramps. I got some wood in case I need to brace, like a, a jack stand. I got two jack stands back there. I got vehicle chocks. So, yeah, I'm pretty set over here. Various fasteners. I've got those Christmas tree annoying body fasteners in the car. I've got push pin rivet fasteners. I've got these really annoying fasteners that constantly break. I got them in various sizes. Um, I've got cotter pins of all different sizes. I have these super annoying uh, rivets on a the car. Um, these came off the race bike. These are Zeus fasteners. Um, here I have similar style fastener to this, but this has a little foam pad behind it. These don't make any noise. These are really cool. Um, here I have these are various little fasteners that you can put a screw through it from behind. For example, you want to secure something like a license plate to a bumper. You don't want to just screw a screw through a bumper. You want this to secure it. Otherwise, eventually the wind will blow it off. These are pretty useful. I got really large ones. These are typically used like underneath a car to hold like mud flaps on and stuff. In this case, I have my various fasteners and I like to label everything so this way I can stack it neatly. So all my cases have been labeled. I've got waterproof seals. These will tighten up around the cable and make it nice and waterproof so you can stick it through a piece of metal. This was supposed to secure a light bar on the roof, but I went a different route instead. Uh, various screws here from 
random car projects, uh, various nuts from locking to non-locking. Uh, just these are like little odds and ends. These are getting to be already more organized. Every um, nut and bolt here is matching already, so I can just pick it up and have a fastener already ready for um, the nut or screw. These are all various sizes. These are really large nuts. I forgot where these came from. Uh, little nuts here, little screws and nuts. I mean, really tiny. I think this came from the uh, Rigid Industries light. Not sure. No, this came from some emergency lights that I was doing. Uh, also, again, matching nuts and bolts here as well. Uh, various different washers. These are mostly lock washers in here of all different types. Some, some look like this. Uh, various rubber washers. Uh, large washers that are plated. Um, these are pretty much indestructible uh, water-wise. They'll never rust on you. Um, this is what I use for various electrical projects. We have, starting from the top, shrink tube butt connectors and the two sizes, actually three sizes, here they are. Um, this is not a shrink one, this is just plastic. Um, that's, the, that's all they do is they just butt connect, they don't shrink. These are usually used for marine products, uh, boats, um, airplanes, or if you just want to waterproof a connection, these are awesome, they really, really work. Then we got 12 gauge, 16 gauge, uh, 22 to 16 gauge, uh, different style of connectors. I don't typically use these. I don't like them. I don't trust them. They tend to slip out on vehicle applications, but they're here just in case you need them. Uh, I have ring terminals from 12 to 10 gauge to 16 to 14 to 22 to 16. And I also have blade, waterproof blade connectors or water resistant, excuse me, uh, exposed ones that you can shrink tube up. Um, I've got some self-tapping screws that go nicely into sheet metal. And I have the male blade connector for this style of connector. So basically it's a complete set. Here we got larger rings. These go well on a car battery to give you a nice connection. 12 to 10 gauge. I got smaller ring terminals. Also 10 to 12 gauge. I got a little bit smaller, 16 to 14 gauge. Uh, 22 to 16 gauge. These get even smaller. I've never used these, but they're there. And then I really never use these. These are like jokes, but again, they're there. They came with the kit, so they're just going to stay there. Then I got wire taps. Never really use these, but they're there just in case I need to make a really low voltage, low amperage connection. Uh, like if I'm doing a relay and all I need is like half an amp or half, you know, something really small. Whatever, I guess I can sacrifice using one of these things, but I absolutely don't like them. But again, you never know when you need them. So basically, they're matching sets. Um, absolutely hate these too. These are notorious from getting loose and messing up. But sometimes you just need them. Um, basically, the way these work is you'll crimp this around a wire. And then you'll crimp this around another wire. And you can tee it up. So you got one wire running this way. And then you got another one that you need to signal off of going that way. So yeah, that's what this one is. This one I use a lot. This is fuses, switches, and relays. This obviously I use in conjunction with all the emergency lights and various projects. I've got all the various fuses here, starting from one amp, working their way up to two, four, five. I mean, they, they don't really jump too many numbers. Whatever's out there, I wanted it. You know, I got, a lot of people don't even know, but you can get 7.5 amp fuses, um, you know, by the 10s and the 15s and 20s. Um, these are diodes, basically. They don't allow electricity to go the opposite direction. I don't think you've ever seen this. Hyundai uses this a lot in their fuse boxes. So basically, um, one of these normal fuses is just like a, a straight wire that's in there, and electricity can go in either direction. This will only let it go one way. So this way, electricity will be coming in this way and going that way. It will not be allowed to return back. Really cool. Uh, fuse puller. I got various relays with their accessory bases. So you can wire this in and pop in your relay. Uh, these are five wire relays. Um, various fuse holders with the appropriate wire uh, gauges. 
Obviously this is a thinner gauge, you'll use a smaller amperage. Various switches, three prong switches with an LED, uh, momentary buttons for like pattern changes on emergency lights, non-LED lights, these are just two prongs, and different sizes, circles and squares. But I use this a lot, this is a really cool kit. If you're gonna do any kind of electrical wiring, you definitely wanna organize your stuff so you can just lay this out, open it up and say, hey, I need a relay with a inline fuse and I want it to be uh, 10 amp. And if you're gonna be doing any kind of cutting or hole cutting inside of metal, you definitely wanna get these grommets. These protect whatever wire. Say you cut a hole using your step bit or whatever. Well, that metal is now sharp. So if you wanna wire through it, as your car shakes, it's gonna be shaking up and down on that really thin slice. And basically that's like tapping it a couple thousand times against a dull knife. Eventually it's gonna cut through. Well, everything metal on a car is negative and you got a positive wire running through that hole. What do you think is gonna happen after maybe a year of shaking? This fits inside of the hole you cut and protects the wire running through it so it never has to make contact with that metal. Really cool stuff, I use these a lot whenever I'm going through like a firewall or I'm going through like a, an exterior sheet metal like behind it, like if I'm running hideaway lights. Uh, you're gonna sometimes have to drill through uh, whatever's behind the tail light and very often that's sheet metal. So if you cut yourself a nice hole and you run a wire through it, boom, throw one of these little things on and you never have to worry about it again. I got various sizes and uh, they work. So there you guys go. That has been the toolbox tour and a couple other things that I showed you around. It's not my full garage tour. I got stuff spread out pretty much all over the place. Um, so yeah, I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed the review on the Harbor Freight tool cart and the way I've got it laid out. But I think this is a really cool addition to my uh, toolkit here. And you guys should definitely, definitely pick it up. And if you want to add some customization to it, grab some vinyl offline and uh, you can make it, you know, all of your own. Thanks guys for watching. It's I'm Shrooken06 and again, Merry Christmas to everybody.